It's the Wilk Report. I'm Michael Wilk coming to you from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, yeah, I hope I don't get a copyright strike from using that audio there, but it, uh, that, that kind of gives you an, uh, an idea of what's going on here with the episode. Uh, series 12, episode 3, Orphan 55. So I'm just going to go uh, ahead and play through the slideshow and then give the uh, story of the uh, the story description and then give you my thoughts on the episode because it, it does get preachy here and uh all right so uh, just a little background uh, orphan 55 was written by ed heim who wrote the episode of series 11 it takes you away which was considered one of the better episodes of series 11 uh which is not saying much because it was a pretty mediocre series for doctor who uh so all right so the doctor graham ryan and yaz uh, locate these cards that uh, I, I guess when you put them together it creates this sort of like cube that teleports people to this place called Tranquility Spa and it's for an all-inclusive stay so they don't have the TARDIS with them so there's no escaping through that and that kind of sets up the situation uh, so they're welcomed by their host uh, this dog woman named uh, Hythreen uh, it, basically it's Hyphen with the E replaced by the number three, really retarded. And I'm sorry, but I don't speak retard uh, very well. So when I say hyphen, it's because you're using a, a number in place of a letter. And if you spell out the number, it completely changes the word you're trying to spell. So yeah, I'm just going to use that uh, word since they want to be stupid with this stuff and kind of edgy. So anyway, uh, Ryan gets a snack from a vending machine, but he's infected by this thing called a hopper virus, which kind of looks like a, a Cheeto worm that uh, is kind of like all glowy and red. But the, the doctor manages to get it out of him. And, you know, it's a really funny way he's hallucinating. And so he has to suck his thumb in order to uh, uh, keep the hallucinations at bay. But, uh, you know, while he's recovering, he meets this girl named Bella, who is also apparently infected with the hopper virus, and she's recovering from that. Meanwhile, there's a, a beach Yaz visits, Chris Chibnall, you can tell his hand is in this, even though Ed Heim wrote the episode, uh, because the, the characters all seem to have, like, these little bits that are fleshed out, and, you know, just enough to make you sympathize with them. There's this elderly couple, Benny and Vilma, and Benny is just about to propose to Vilma after, you know, something like 46 years together, when Yaz pops in and interrupts it and kind of becomes a killjoy without really knowing it, and, you know, Benny's uh, breathing through a tube so he's trying to do the romantic thing uh, be, you know while he's still <laughs> alive but uh, you know then there's this uh, physical breach uh, and we think it might have something to do with the hopper virus but it turns out uh, to be something more so you know the guests are asked to assemble for a mustard drill but the doctor is not so convinced that it is a drill because uh, we see somebody walking by with a, a weapon trying to zero in on uh, something so the doctor asks uh, Hythreen to give her access to the linen cupboard, which is actually a deadlock security room with an armory. And there they meet Kane, played by Laura Fraser. Now, Laura Fraser is a classically trained actress. She's been in, uh, you know, various uh, productions of Shakespearean. And in fact, one of her most notable roles was as the, the, the daughter in uh, Titus Andronicus, uh, starred uh, Anthony Hopkins. So... And then, of course, she was also in A Knight's Tale, if you remember that movie with Heath Ledger. She was in that movie, too. Uh, so the doctor becomes suspicious because she realizes there's this thing called an ionic membrane, which is basically a force field, uh, but it's needed to protect the holiday spa. And there are these monsters that break into the spa. They start killing guests, and people are dying. They're dropping left and right. The hopper virus had also gotten into the spa's systems, disabling the transporter and the security cameras. So the remaining survivors, uh, uh, spot mechanic Nevy and his son Silas, who's a uh, Wesley Crusher level uh, know-it-all brat, and then of course Vilma and Benny, they all end up at the linen cupboard. Uh, but Vilma notices that Benny has gone missing because he goes to pick up her hat, which she dropped. So he's been taken by the creatures. The doctor manages to reconstruct the ionic membrane from scratch, which uh, forces the creatures back out of the dome. Kane identifies them as the, a local species called the Dregs, and they live outside the dome. And the spot, is, as it turns out, is called a fake-cation, or, or fake-cation, 
uh, which is a place designed to look like a vacation in a fabricated environment. In this case, they built a spa on a devastated planet, an orphan world where the ecosystem's been totally destroyed. And, you know, what's left alive obviously did not uh, evolve uh, to be very gentle in order to survive that hostile environment. So uh, the spa system tracks, you know, all the guests, uh, shows Benny is outside the spa, the creatures apparently have them, but for some reason have not killed them, even though they've killed everyone else. So the doctor, you know, on, on the insistence of Vilma, leads, uh, well, basically, Kane loads everyone into a transport and gives them, like, these breathing uh, apparatuses that fit onto their arms, and then they wear these nasal strips, which, I guess, uh, deliver oxygen to them that way. So the vehicle, uh, the group sees the uninhabitable desolation of this orphan planet. It's called Orphan 55. So it's a 55th world to have been com completely abandoned by its elites, and, you know, people left behind, they probably died. So uh, the vehicle is caught in a drag trap, and the creatures surround it. They keep Benny as a hostage, and there's there's a really funny moment where, uh, and I'll get to that in the in my actual analysis of the episode. Uh, there's this really funny and touching moment with Benny, but then it doesn't last, and the group has to end up making a run for it into the nearby service tunnel. And unfortunately, the dregs kill Benny, and they also get uh, Hyphreen, who's dragged out to her death. So once in the tunnel, Bella reveals herself uh, to be Kane's daughter when she pulls a weapon on everyone, and because of, apparently because Kane neglected Bella as a child uh she decided she was going to get back at her mother by destroying the spa which she was going to use to finance the terraforming of the planet to make it habitable again and with the idea of okay she would leave that terraformed planet to her daughter but you know she ended up sacrificing her relationship with her and bella ended up having to take care of her sick father until he died and she's understandably bitter but uh most rich brats who go through that experience don't commit mass murder uh, I'll, I'll get to that after the review so so basically uh while they're in the while the group is in the tunnel uh bella uh, tries to transport out uh, she ends up hitching a ride with ryan because of reasons and leaves everyone else behind in the tunnels so the doctor yaz and graham discover a rusted russian sign meaning that they're in a former Russian subway system, meaning that Orphan 55 is actually the, a devastated planet Earth in the future. And the dregs, as it turns out, are the mutated remnants of humanity who were left behind when all the rich people escaped. So Vilma sacrifices herself to give the group more time to escape. They are running out of oxygen. And, and going through the dreg nest, the doctor does a mind meld with one of them to learn the truth about them being former humans who mutated over generations and she discovers a, a, a unique biological trait these creatures breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen and she's able to refill her oxygen tank that way which is kind of clever actually and kane ends up staying behind to give the group more time to escape bella resumes trying to destroy the spa you know ryan's trying to talk her out of it but no dice uh but the dregs start surrounding the spa the ionic membrane is down uh the group fixes a transporter and they safely evacuate uh, Bella is convinced to stay behind with Kane, uh, who apparently survived the encounter in the tunnel, to uh, buy time for the others to escape. And then, of course, the doctor tries to console her companions that uh, all is not lost, as there's only one possible future, and that it's up to the actions we take now to either avoid it or fulfill it. So my overall thoughts on this episode, it was okay. It wasn't bad it wasn't great it was just okay there were some serious issues here i mean it did have its moments i mean the, the scene where benny dies when they get back in contact with him after the truck falls into the ambush he asks vilma to marry him uh which is you know very touching but then you know also very funny too because you know the first thing is on his mind is to try and finish what he began when we first saw him in the episode but then he follows that up with a desperate plea for somebody to kill him because the dregs have messed him up that badly that he He's a goner anyway, and the most he can hope for is just a quick and relatively painless death, which Kane says she grants him. Uh, another problem is the characterizations here. We're not given enough time to let the characters breathe on their own and see any real development. Benny and Vilma had some real potential here, but we didn't get enough of them. They're also very derivative of the couple in Voyage of the Damned, which is the Christmas special before we get to series four with David Tennant, where there's a married couple in that story too. The husband is killed and the wife, who's 
grief-stricken and no longer has anything to live for, sacrifices herself to buy time for the rest of the survivors to get away from the monsters. And we see that repeated here. And my problem is that we see these elements constantly being recycled from other episodes in New Doctor Who. And that's kind of a problem because you're not really doing anything new. You're just trying to recycle stuff that's been done before. And it's pretty obvious that you're doing it. Another problem is the dynamic between Kane and Bella. Bella harbors his hatred toward her mother to the point where she deliberately commits mass murder in order to get back at her for neglecting her. And then for some reason she has a redemption arc that doesn't feel remotely earned because there's never any time during the course of this story uh, for the two of them to resolve their issues and so it just feels contrived. And finally we get the elephant in the room where the doctor goes on this monologue practically breaking the fourth wall uh, to deliver the message of the episode which is you know we are destroying this planet and we do actually have a very narrow window in which to avert extinction it insists upon itself yes thank you peter griffin but yeah i mean it does insist on itself i mean and granted you know shows like star trek and the the original twilight zone and the Outer Limits, and pretty much any TV show from the 1970s, uh, they did have, you know, very obvious political or, or social messaging, but the difference between then and now is that they didn't club you over the head with that messaging or talk down to the audience the way TV shows and movies do today. And again, here we see that the writer doesn't trust his audience to be smart enough to understand the overall message of the story. If you have to stoop to insulting the intelligence of your audience to the point where you treat your audience members as as though they're children who have to have everything spelled out for them, that's going to take us out of the story. We're going to feel insulted. We're going to reject the message. And you've completely wasted 45 minutes, an hour of people's time. And you could have gone ahead and, you know, really kind of shorn up some of the character development here. Now, having said all this, there were elements to like about it. I mean, the the dregs, uh, I mean, they're, they're properly horrific. They are the mutated descendants of those who were left behind when the elites of human society escaped earth having wrecked the planet and you know they obviously mutated and devolved into these creatures they're clever creatures but they're still mostly beasts and actually that's a a couple things to note about that the whole notion of rich people escaping the planet and leaving the survivors to fend for themselves that's basically what Elon musk and others are trying to do with their private rockets where you have to pay like five million dollars a ride well who's going to have five million dollars except the super rich so obviously that's a not so subtle dig at him again it's a nice touch but, you know, again, you're, you're hammering people over the head with it, so it kind of loses its impact just because the blunt force trauma has blunted you to any other messaging within the story. And then the other thing about this is that, like I said, they're prop- these monsters are properly horrific. And then it goes back to a, a couple of books by Olaf Stapledon called uh, Last and First Men and Star Maker. And both of these books dealt with the various incarnations of humanity as they rise to the peak of their civilizations, fall back into savagery, and devolve back into a beast-like state and then re-evolve back into a, a human form but that human form is different physically but also mentally and spiritually as well and it's a little bit more advanced than the human race which came before it kind of reminded me of that and if that was one inspiration for this story then i'm gonna have to tip my hat to this the problem here overall is that ed heim much like chris chibnall and his team of writers they don't trust you the audience to understand the subtext so they feel the need to go ahead and hit you over the head with this closing monologue delivered by the doctor now i thought that was unnecessary so what do you think do you agree do you disagree why or why not let me know in the comments below i want to hear from you if you like what you've heard and you want to hear more hit the subscribe button and the bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever we upload new content like this video share it if you want to help support the channel keep the lights on help us bring you more content head over to our patreon or subscribe star page we can't do this without you until next time this is michael wilk for the wilk report saying take care Good night. I'm out.